human beings by nature are inclined towards and resort to those with power, authority, wealth, high positions in order to achieve their goals and to fulfill their needs for them. And this is just human nature, the weak resource to the strong, the poor resource to the rich. However, we as believers are commanded, it's an obligation to resort to Allah Azza wa Jal. To place our trust in Allah Azza wa Jal. To rely only on Allah Azza wa Jal. And why shouldn't we? When Allah Azza wa Jal for those who need strength is the strongest. When those who are resorting to those with authority, Allah Azza wa Jal, to Him belongs ultimate sovereignty. When those who are resorting to those with wealth, know that Allah Azza wa Jal is the provider for them and for those to whom they resort to. See, reliance on Allah Azza wa Jal, as Ibn Taymiyyah, Rahmatullah alayhi said, is the essence of Islamic monotheism. It is the essence of Tawheed. And it is half of the religion, as Ibn al-Qayyim said. And it is indeed the quality of true, sincere slaves of Allah. Allah Azza wa Jal commanded Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself to rely on Allah, saying, وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى الْحَيِّ الَّذِي لَا يَمُوتِ And rely upon the one who's life, who is ever alive, that never dies. And he also commanded the believers to rely on Allah. وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ And upon Allah let the believers rely. Reliance on Allah Azza wa Jal is when the heart truly and fully depends on Allah Azza wa Jal in realizing benefits and averting evil and harm. It is a deed that is purely practiced by the heart. The tongue and limbs have nothing to do with it. Imam Ahmad said, it is to give up hope in realizing benefit through people and placing your trust fully in Allah Azza wa Jal and resorting to Him in all your affairs. And the sign of true reliance upon Allah Azza wa Jal is when the slave does his part and does not wait or expect results and outcomes, leaves that to Allah. Because ultimately it is in the hands of Allah Utilizing Islamically permissible means is part of true reliance on Allah See Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the most knowledgeable of all creations of Allah he is the one who relied on Allah Azza wa Jal the most and in the most perfect manner. Yet, he utilized means. When he was about to migrate from Mecca to Medina, he placed Ali radiallahu anhu in his bed instead of him. And he hired a guide to guide him through the way from Mecca to Medina. He could have just said, I'll rely on Allah, I am his messenger. He will protect me so I don't need Ali and he will guide me so I don't, I don't need a guide. No. It's a lesson to us that if he relied while utilizing means, then we need to utilize means as a part of true reliance upon Allah. He وسلم, never fought a battle without a weapon. He used to wear an armor to protect himself from arrows and swords. And he never set out on a journey without taking provision. All these are means. That he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
used to utilize. Another issue related to this, utilizing the means, is that one need not attach his heart to the means, but rather to the one who caused the means and commanded us to utilize these means. Because Allah Azza is capable of stripping these means, their effect. Didn't this happen to almost all of us? We get sick or someone we love or we know gets sick and they take the medicine and nothing happens. They remain sick. Wasn't the consumption of this medication part of utilizing the means that we're commanded to utilize? Yes, it was. But is it always the case that means lead to what we think they will? It's in the hands of Allah. So we need to place our trust and reliance on Allah whilst utilizing the means. And the last point regarding these, this issue of utilizing the means is that don't undermine or underestimate any of the means regarding of, regardless of how insignificant it might appear to you. You see in the story of Maryam alayhi salam which Allah Azza wa Jal tells us in Surah Maryam, Allah Azza wa Jal commanded her to shake the trunk of the palm tree. What can a weak woman who just gave birth do to a trunk of a palm tree other than complying with the command of utilizing the means? Shake the, the trunk of the palm tree. And it will drop for you ripe dates. So we are to utilize all means regardless of how insignificant or minor it may appear. How often do we need to rely on Allah? What part or segments of our affairs do we need to rely upon Allah in? Well, it's everything. It's everything. But I will just mention few. We always get afflicted. And that is one of the situations where a true believer needs to rely fully on Allah. Allah Azza wa says, قُلْ لَنْ يُصِيبَنَا إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَنَا هُوَ مَوْلَانَا وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُ Say, O oh Muhammad, nothing will befall us except that which Allah had decreed for us. He is our supporter. And upon Allah, let the believers rely. So since we know that the decrees are certain, and the affliction happened, the only way to deal with it is to resort to Allah, relying on Him in order to deal and to counter these afflictions and difficulties. Another form or another situation where one needs reliance upon Allah Azza wa Jal is when he feels pessimistic regarding certain situations or events or Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu said and this is reported by Abu Dawood classified as authentic by Al-Albani he narrated that the Prophet sallallahu said pessimism is shirk pessimism is shirk pessimism is shirk and then Ibn Mas'ud commented saying, every one of us feels at times some of this, but Allah Azza wa removes it by means of reliance upon Him. You want to purify your, uh, your heart from pessimism? Then rely on Allah Azza wa Jal. Something that we do on daily basis, 
which cannot happen except by relying on Allah Azza wa Worshipping Allah. Something that we recite every day in every single salah, whether it's an obligation or an optional salah, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ Don't we recite this as a part of the Fatiha? It is you whom we worship, and it is, whom, it is you from whom we seek assistance. We rely on you to worship you. Without your assistance, we cannot worship you. So we need to rely on Allah Azza wa Jal so He would enable us to worship Him. How many hundreds of people are in this Jum'ah congregation? How many thousands of people are deprived outside? It is Allah Azza wa Jal who blessed me and you to be here. How many people adhere to the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? And how many people refrain from adhering to it? Those who adhere are blessed, enabled by Allah. Their reliance on Allah is what enabled them to adhere to the sunnah. The sister who adheres fully to hijab, the husband who commands his wife and his daughter to adhere to hijab, the man who commands his children, the boys, to go to the masjid for salah. This can't happen without reliance on Allah Azza wa Because without Allah it won't happen. Don't you see that when we repeat after the Mu'addin, after the Adhan, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. When it comes to hayya ala salah, hasten to prayer, hayya ala al falah, hasten to success, we stop. We don't repeat the same thing. We say, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. No will, no power, no means, except by the support of Allah Azza wa So we need the reliance on Allah Azza wa Daily, in every single act of worship, even, even if it is as simple in our scale as saying SubhanAllah. Because many people are mute. They just simply cannot utilize their tongue in the remembrance of Allah. They'll be sitting waiting for example in line. They have something in the bank or in the hospital waiting for their turn and they'll be sitting for an hour and two hours and three hours doing something, waiting to do something. Mute. Or on the phone. They'll be traveling for long hours from here to the UK, from the US to the Whatever, right? Hours after hours after hours pass and some people are simply deprived. They did not rely on Allah Azza wa Jal in worshipping Him, in remembering Him, and thus they were not able to worship Allah. Lastly, our daily affairs, worldly affairs, we want rizq. We want someone who is single wants a wife. Someone who doesn't have children wants children. We have to rely on Allah Azza wa We want to buy a car, don't we pray istikhara and say, and listen to the wordings of istikhara. Allahumma, O oh Allah, inni astakhiruka bi'ilmik. I consult you through your knowledge. So you confirm that he's knowledgeable. Wa astakhiruka bi'qudratik. And I seek strength you through your power. وَأَسْأَلُكَ مِنْ فَضْلِكَ الْعَظِيمِ And I seek or ask you from your abundant favors. فَإِنَّكَ تَعْلَمُ وَلَا أَعْلَمُ You know and I don't know. These wordings by themselves are a state of servitude to Allah and submission. They're a state of full reliance upon Allah Azza wa Jal. And these are not pertaining to worship. So we need Allah Azza wa Jal. We need Allah's assistance, Allah Azza wa Jal, in all our affairs, whether it is worldly or pertaining to the hereafter and the acts of worship. And reliance upon Allah Azza wa Jal. 
results in great benefits to the slave of Allah Azza They're more than to be enumerated. But I've selected some of them for today. Number one, protection against the clear vicious enemy of humans, the devil. Allah says, إِنَّهُ لَيْسَ لَهُ سُلْطَانٌ عَلَى الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَلَى رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ He, referring to the devil, he has no power against the believers, those who believe and rely upon Allah. He has no power. If your reliance upon Allah Azza wa Jal is true, is correct, then the devil will have no way approaching you and attacking you. Victory. Allah Azza wa Jal says, إِن يَنصُرْكُمُ اللَّهُ فَلَا غَالِبَ لَكُمْ If Allah Azza wa Jal should support you, no one can overcome you. وَإِن يَخْذُلْكُمْ فَمَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يَنصُرُكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ But if he should forsake you, then who after him can support you? وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ And upon Allah, let the believers rely. For those who are blessed, and enabled by Allah Azza wa to recite the adhkar throughout their day. One of the adhkar is when we leave the house. We say, Bismillah, in the name of Allah. Tawakkaltu ala Allah. I rely upon Allah. Wala hawla wala quwwata illa billah. There is no will, no power except with Allah. He is called upon and is told, Hasbuk, this is enough. This is sufficient. Kufita, you're sufficed all your needs. Wahudita, and you'll be guided. Wawuqita, and you'll be protected from all evil pertaining to this life and the hereafter. And then the devil will step away from his path. And then the devils will speak to one another. One of them will tell the other, كَيْفَ بِكَ What can you do? بِرَجُلٍ قَدْ هُدِيَ وَكُفِيَ وَوُقِيَ What can you do with a man who suffice protected and guided? What can you do with him? How can you harm him? How can you affect him? You see, guidance. You'll be sufficed all your needs. And you'll be protected from all evil by relying on Allah Azza wa Jal. By the virtue of relying on Allah Azza wa Jal. This is reported by Abu Dawood and classified as sound, as authentic by Al Albani and narrated by Anas. How brave can anyone be? Well, bravery is when one relies on Allah because once you rely on Allah, you know that He's sufficient for you. He has the ultimate power. So another, nothing scares you. Anas narrates, and this is reported in Al-Bukhari and Muslim. He said, one night, we woke up on a sound of a huge or we, we heard a huge sound which woke us up. So people rushed out of their houses to see what is going on. Only to find out the Prophet وسلم, coming back from the, the, the end part of, the, of Medina, approaching them on a horse of Urwa radiallahu anhu without a saddle and his uh, sword is hung on his neck and he said don't be scared nothing to be alarmed alone in the middle of the night hearing something so loud it could be an army attacking Medina alone 
He takes his sword, he gets on a horse, and he goes towards the source of that sound alone. That's bravery. That's reflected from his reliance on Allah Azza wa Jal. Don't we all strive to enter Jannah? Don't we supplicate Allah day and night, O oh Allah, admit us into Jannah? May Allah admit us all into Jannah and our parents and loved ones. Allahumma amin. Well, the Prophet وسلم, informed us that those who truly rely upon Allah Azza wa Jal will enter Jannah without being held to account. Ibn Abbas narrates, and this is reported by Bukhari and Muslim, that the Prophet وسلم, said, and there are different narrations to this narration or wordings to this narration. He said 70,000 of my ummah, of my nation, will enter into paradise without being held accountable. And then he gave descriptions. And the last one of them, وَعَلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ And they rely upon their Lord. Reliance upon Allah Azza wa Jal. Don't you want to be loved by Allah? Shaykh al Uthaymeen said, It is easy to love Allah because it's a claim. However, the difficult part is to be loved by Allah. Don't we want to be loved by Allah? Reliance upon Allah Azza wa Jal grants us this love. Inna Allah yuhibbu al Allah loves those who rely upon Him. We work day and night in order to provide for our families sustenance. The Prophet ﷺ, and this is reported by Ahmed, classified as authentic by Al Albani and narrated by Umar ibn al Khattab. He said, If you were to rely upon Allah, with true reliance, He will provide you just like He provides birds. They leave early morning with empty stomachs and they return in the afternoon with full stomachs. They're not engineers, they're not IT specialists, they're not medical doctors, they're not this and that. They're birds. They have known but Allah Azza wa to provide for them. The Prophet ﷺ said, if you rely upon Allah like these birds do, then He will provide you. He will provide you just like He provides them. Depression, gloomy lives, tight hearts, sealed chests, and you name it. Different names psychiatrists know about. This will be removed when we rely upon Allah. So when you, when you understand the essence of reliance and that by it or through it your place, your trust, your heart is with Allah and you know who Allah is, you're reassured. You're relaxed. Your heart is comfortable. Why? Because you placed it in a safe place. You place it in the hands of the only one who has control over all affairs, all matters, all resources, all humans. It gives you this tranquility, this peace of mind, this relaxation, and it removes this anxiety and depression and, and worry and sadness and which most people, most of the population of the globe suffer from. And there are many more benefits to reliance upon Allah Azza wa Jal. But I've selected these. And if we were to enumerate all the benefits, we would probably need a year of khuttas. But the important matter is to benefit 
and act upon what we hear. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us upon those who listen and act upon what they hear. Allahumma ameen. Astaghfirullah fastaghfiru. Alhamdulillahi ala ihsani. Wa shukru lahu ala tawfiqihi wa imtinanih. Wa ashadu an la ilaha illallahu wahdahu la sharika lahu ta'zima lishanih. Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluhu al-da'i la rubwanih. Thumma amma bahd. How does one achieve reliance upon Allah? Different things can help a person perfect his reliance upon Allah. The first and most important is knowledge. But it's not just any knowledge. It is knowledge about Allah. It is knowledge of the qualities of Allah. Knowledge of the attributes, knowledge of the names, knowledge of the abilities of Allah. See, the more you know your Creator, the easier it becomes for you to rely upon Him. And the more knowledgeable you become, the more re you re it's proportional. The more knowledgeable, the more you rely. So knowledge of Allah Azza wa Jal, His qualities. You see Allah Azza wa Jal ends many of the verses that speak about reliance when he addresses Muhammad sallallahu rely upon the one who's ever alive never dies rely upon Allah you are upon the clear truth rely upon Allah he is the almighty all merciful qualities and attributes of Allah knowing them helps you relying upon Allah that's number one Number two is firmly believing that what Allah Azza wa Jal had decreed will certainly happen and nothing can change it. As in the verse, قُلْ يُصِيبَنَا إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَنَا Nothing will befall us or afflict us except that which Allah Azza wa Jal had decreed. The end of the verse, وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكِّلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنُونَ and upon Allah let the believers rely. The connection here is that when one firmly believes that everything is happening and that there is nothing that can change it, he can't help but rely upon Allah Azza wa Jalla in dealing with it. Number three is to remember our need to Allah, our weakness. See, regardless of how powerful, how wealthy, how strong we become, we still need Allah Azza wa Jal in every breath we take and in every single move we make. Reminding ourselves with that is a means that help us <coughs> <coughs> that would help us rely upon Allah Azza wa Jal. Number four is to remind ourselves that no matter, no matter what the status of those to whom we resort to we rely upon to fulfill our needs and take care of our affairs. We must always remind ourselves that these people have no control of their own affairs, cannot bring benefit to their own selves, let alone benefit us or harm us without the decree of Allah. 
this reminder will help us rely upon Allah Azza wa Jal and not be deceived by the strength of others and in the point before it and not be deceived by our strength. Last point I would like to mention is refraining from sins. What has that got to do with anything? See, reliance requires strong faith. And we know, as we were told by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he said to Abu Bakr, Sa'atan wa sa'a, faith fluctuates, sometimes it's up and sometimes it's down. We know that it goes up with good deeds, but it goes down, it drops, it decreases because of sinning, because of evil doing. So when we refrain from sinning, our faith goes up. And thus, we are more able to rely upon Allah Azza wa Jal and put our trusts our trust and hearts in his hand subhanahu wa ta'ala we ask allah azza wa jal to enable us to act upon knowledge we ask allah azza wa jal to enable us to educate ourselves about him and his qualities and his attributes and his abilities subhanahu wa ta'ala allahumma aghfir lana dhunubana wa israfana fi amrina وثبت اقدامنا وانصرنا على